empty hearts and neon lights The playing with my mind Gotta get out of it Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, karibu sana and thank you for stopping by. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you one of my favorite dinner recipes and this is chapo and specifically butternut chapati or malenge chapatis, chicken curry and sauteed cabbage. So if you're new here, kindly consider subscribing because over here we create awesome content on cooking, cleaning, organization and Sometimes DIY. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So today I want to make uh, chapots and I always use malenge or butternut. So for today, I'm using butternut and I'm going to show you how I make my chapots. I'm going to make the chapot with, what is it called? Uh, chicken curry and sauteed cabbage so let's get, let's get into it first of all i'm going to blend this i have boiled these until they're like super soft i don't know if i'm going to use all of it but... and that's it let me just go in one more time to make sure like it's Properly. I am the one. So, see, it's all blended. So, I won't use all of it. Let me get another measuring cup and a spoon. Malenge. So for the flour, I'm going to measure three cups. teaspoon of salt we're going to mix this so for the oil we're going to add a tablespoon then I'm going to add the good stuff this is the butternut Maybe I go in with like a full cup. So I'm going to add another half. Mix that here. See? Then now I'm going to add water, half half a cup until it's enough to make the dough. So I have started with half a cup of water I'm going to go in with another half cup of water now I'm going to use my mixer to beat the dough so I'm going to start with the lowest I'm going to start with level one. And I can already feel the butter like is the dough is too soft. Oh I swim no more, I'm singing. Take me to the world of This is 
good. I'm just going to roll this out onto a surface and then I can oil it. So I have my board here. So I'm going to spread a bit of flour so that I can roll this. about half an inch and then I'm just going to drizzle oil broken hearts and stubborn fights tired and true to lies gotta get up stop wasting time yeah I wanna run off I am Then I'm going to make like strips of one inch. And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone. Just to find somewhere that finally feels like home. Oh, oh, oh. I hate all this overthinking. Oh, 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 oh. Then what I'm going to do is lift up, stretch it a bit, and then now roll it like so. If you Meisha and it's small, you add another one. You stretch it as you go. Then once it Mifika, once it reaches the place that you want, you just press it like that. Dip it in flour and set it aside and continue the whole process for all of them. want to cover them for like 15 minutes as I prepare the stew. So these are all the ingredients I need for the chicken and the cabbage. So this is half a chicken and I'm using like the half kifua, kifua mbili. So these are like two breasts, the top part of the chicken and then this onion is for the chicken. Then down here I have like garlic and ginger paste. Uh, this is coconut milk, chicken masala, paprika, and this is a chili cube. This is the normal one. And then this is one big uh, puree tomato. This is an onion, and this is cabbage. This onion is for this cabbage. Let's get started over here. I am going to be cooking them at the same time. And my pot is not dirty. This is the pot I've been using to boil the butternut so i want to start by cooking the chicken and i do not want to cook it in any water so i'm going to remove all the pieces this water is from washing the chicken i washed it in water and vinegar 
the kuku. So to the chicken, I'm going to cook it in a bit of salt. <laughs> I hope the oil is hot so that I can fry the cabbage. So this is one small onion. Yeah. So our onions are cooked. Just want to add the cabbage. with curry powder just to give it some color it's like hospital food <laughs> and then with some dania or coriander the cabbage is done and i'm not going to cook it any further because we like crunchy cabbage so yeah that's our sauteed cabbage we go there now the chicken the juices are still there so i'm going to leave that to cook while it's open so that the water can dry down so the chicken has browned the way i want it about a tablespoon I don't like cooking with a lot of oil but also this chicken was a bit oily so that's why I've added just a bit and then I'm going to go in with the garlic and ginger paste we are going to go in with the rib Tomatoes. and I'm going to cover this so that the tomatoes can cook and remove the acidity also I am watching virgin river as I cook so all the water as you can see has gone from the tomatoes so I'm going to add now the spices so I'm just mixing it up because down there is only like water so I'm going to use half a can Oops. then the rest of it I'm going to store it in this container and this is because when you store like any canned food once it has been opened, it always gets mold. So that's what I do to store it. So I'm just going to put this in the freezer and then get it out when I'm cooking anything else. For the chicken, now let's add the nor cube. This is the chili one. And then for the paprika, I'm just adding like a teaspoon. And the same for the chicken masala. And that should be about it. So in this tea, I'm going to add some water. I've added water up to the half of the can. So that I can get everything out. It's best if you use hot water, but I don't have any. 
as of now. It might look like a lot now, but it's not because I have to let it to simmer down. Yeah, so let's cover this so that everything can combine. And then once that is going, I think I'm going to put it this side and then this one. And we can move it to the other side. So that over here. I can start so that over here I can start like on the charcoal. I'm cooking this in low heat. So uh, this have rested for like 15 minutes. So I'm just going to spread flour. And the pan is on already. Make sure you have enough flour at the bottom so that the dough doesn't stick. So you just keep rolling and rolling. So yeah, that's the first circle. So the pan is already hot. So I'm just going to put that. So I'm going to pre-cook this. So the next one is this one. I'm not going to start cooking them in oil immediately. So for now, it's just pre-cooking them. So you just want to make sure that you're rolling the chapo evenly. So that you don't have like a thin center and then a thick edge so you just roll it evenly i don't know if that makes sense so if you like see where there is more dough you just roll that place out shape is not really important yeah so the second one is done so let's check on the chicken and i think this is good to go I'm just going to, oops, I'm going to taste the salt and there is no need of adding more salt. So I'm just adding the dania and yeah, the stew is ready. Look at that, pure coconut joy. <laughs> so let's get back to the chapel. So this is pre-cooked, I'm going to put the next one. You can also use a rolling pin when you're putting it. It's much easier and you don't get to burn yourself. Just hold the dough away from you, place it on the pan, and then just roll. As simple as that. On to the next one. So the second one has already pre-cooked. And the third one. So I always cook like three of them. I cook all of them. I like pre-cook them and then now I put the oil. So for the frying oil, I prefer using cowboy. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So I put the chapels on the fire or on the pan and then I don't oil them directly. Like I spin them around the oil, if that makes sense. Then the oil drips all the way to the middle. Keep spinning them. If the oil is excess, is in excess, I just remove it. Ooh, hot. So I do that until it's cooked at the bottom. Once the bottom side has cooked like that, I just turn them. And then leaving the one that's on the pan, I turn the rest and then I keep oiling that part, the bottom one. So the bottom part is done, I then turn them again, leave the bottom one, turn the rest.
and you know that your chapels have layers when like they have like air spaces if it's rising like that but since we've put them on top of one another it doesn't rise too much so the bottom is done again turn hold the top to the top chapels leave the bottom one hey, my best days passes by most long for a place that they never find I'm afraid I wake up when I die And it is too late to climb So I can cook them like this up to like 5 or 6 depending on how much time I have But I find that the more I make the faster I go But I prefer like 3-3 three, three. Because this way I'm able to monitor like which one I haven't cooked. Look at that. Just look at that guys. Ah. So the heat is a bit low. I'm adding as I go. And if I notice that the heat is too high, I reduce. And then keep cooking. This part that's remaining. And the bottom one is done. All the two. Flip them. So the bottom one is done. I'm just going to put them in a hot pot and it has like a baking paper in it. Then I'm just going to close it. So that is how I cook. I'm going to cook the rest of them and then I'll show you once I'm done. So the stew is ready. I have just heated it up a bit since I took time cooking the chapels. Many mountains Time is of the answers The blood running through our core It's best to know Then I'm also going to serve the cabbage And I'm just going to serve it On the side here Now I can serve the chapels I did show you how all the chapels turned out. So here they are. And I'm telling you the smell when I've opened this. That's how the chapels look. They are super soft. So I always like picking the middle one. Not Tataru I one if they are really soft. So I am going to just do that. Just look at that guys. Layers upon layers mm -hmm. they are so soft so i'm going to take another one now we serve <laughs> so i want to taste how everything is together so we are going to start with the chapel Ooh, i had missed malente chapel so much So hot. I'm only going to describe this meal with these words. It tastes like Christmas. I cannot explain it. This is so good. I could cry. And the coconut with the chicken and the butternut. Ooh. Slappage. It's only one of you out there like me who likes katakataing their tacos into the stew. And then just... Mm. 
you guys should definitely try this out this stew might not look all that but the taste is where it's at this thing is good mm. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment down below on what you think about it or what else you guys enjoy your chapos with. I'd be interested to know. And please subscribe to my channel. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. And I'll be really glad if you came on board to help me out. Thank you so much, guys. Until next time. Bye. I feel sorry when it's over.